Everyone had their morning coffee this morning? Mm. Up and about? Mm. Love a morning yeah. coffee. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Nothing better. Well, you were saying last week, Jonesy, that we had a, an email from someone. We did. Requesting a coffee discussion. So. Mm. Yeah. Maybe but, about crew in Belgium. <laughs> well, yeah, I was just going to just going to touch on that. So we had a, a notice uh, from the platform. Is that right? The platform um, people uh, for our podcast saying that we've hit a hundred hundred list a hundred um, top one hundred in the uh, health and wow, 101st, fitness. Hundred and first. We'll call it a hundred after this week. Yeah, we yeah. be, we've hit the top one hundred in Belgium. Big so, in Belgium. Yeah. So for those people listening in Belgium, thank you so much for listening to us. It's probably people using VPNs yeah. in other parts of the world, <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah. hey, we'll take yeah. it. You know, yeah, we'll yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> but I've been to Belgium. It's a beautiful place. Have you been to Bruges? No. Man. Nah, you know that movie in Bruges with, um, what's his old, what's his mate, that Aussie actor? Um, ah, damn it. They do I'm, pretty good waffles, don't they, over there? I've oh, been to the Belgian yeah. beer cafe. It's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. But do Bruges, do Bruges is, Bruges uh, up there with Prague is one of the most beautiful cities yeah. in Europe, man. It is beautiful. Apparently, the Germans didn't bomb it in World War Two or whatever because it was um, too beautiful to bomb. Is that right? Yeah. So, yeah, Tab and I, when we were travelling through Europe, we did all the um, the Field of Flanders tours and the Passchendaele uh, Ridge and all that sort of stuff where the World War One was fought. It's um, an amazing place. You've done mm. a bit of travel? Hmm. Any good coffees around the world? I reckon the Belgians love their coffee, don't yeah. they? Yeah. Yeah. Vien- v- Vienna? Well, it's Vienna? Austria, Pro- but yeah. probably yeah. wouldn't. <laughs> but it's uh, it's all Europe. Yeah, probably yeah. wouldn't be probably wouldn't be Starbucks. That's no, for sure. Definitely not. Mm. Yeah. Um, probably Italy. Uh, some of the best coffee, but I wasn't really a coffee drinker back then. Yeah. I was in my early twenties. I didn't start drinking coffee until probably kids come thirties. Yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> that was for me. Yeah. I was about thirty, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm hard on the bandwagon now, though. Yeah. Isn't yeah. it funny that you give uh, a kid now a, co- a sippy of your coffee and they just despise the taste of it? They it's screw their be, face up. Yep. It's an acquired taste. It's got to be Bitter. something to do with yeah. uh, maturation of taste buds or something. Yeah. Mm. You do the same thing with beer. Yeah. Ugh, no, yeah. How bad is beer the first time yeah. you have it? You pretend you like it. But it's <laughs> when you, yeah, yeah. When Horrible. you give beer to your six-year-old kid, and they don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, yeah. It, give them time mm. when they're 10 or 11, mate. Yeah. <laughs> what I about jest, you, Mick? I jest, of course, of course. Mick, what about you? Have you had your coffee today? And what, what is your coffee choice? Uh, yeah, g'day, guys. Uh, I have had a coffee today. Um, and I, I normally run just a, a little soy latte. That's Ooh. my little number. Ooh. Soy. Of, soy. Oh, my goodness. We're going to be soy. talking about soy later, aren't we? Bit of a soy boy, yeah. I enjoy it. just just a dash, just a dash of soy. Um, nice boobs. Or uh, <laughs> or else I've got a I've got a nice a nice almond milk, um, which is uh, uh, seed oil free. Uh, oh, it's literally good. just almonds and um, almonds and water, which you, I think is primarily. <laughs> do you think they most, should be, most of those milks? Do you think they ahead, should be though? calling that milk? Because they're not milking it, are they? They're juicing it, so it's almond juice. I've seen you suck yeah. down an almond uh, almond coffee. Do almonds have nipples? You're an almond man, aren't you? No. no. I, I have had almond in the past and then oh, Okay. You're well, like Mickey said, there any cafe that has it doesn't they have vegetable oil in them. Yeah, they So do, if yeah. you if you can find a good the one that barista doesn't have ones it in all there, have the um, sunflower oil added, but Yeah, uh, it's probably all right, but yeah. I think the vegetable oil helps it froth. Yeah. So I steer away from mm. any I just go full fat dairy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Straight up. And have a long mac. Um, traditionally, you know, you should have it just with a dollop of milk. Yeah. But, um, you know, I'd like to have a little bit more to drink on, so I'll top it up with milk. I was talking to a mate of mine from Melbourne. They've got no idea what a long mac topped up is. Yeah, yeah no. it's, it's not a thing over there. No. It's <coughs> a short mac or a yeah. long mac. Yeah. There's Tradition. no long mac topped up. Yeah. And if yeah. you want a mac, a long or a, a traditional mac here, you have to tell them traditional yeah. mac or they'll top it up. That's right. So, yeah. Crazy that the trend over here, I don't know, maybe it's been going for five or six years now, I suppose, is you, you get your long mac and it's got milk in it. Yeah. Mm. It's a, it's a two shot latte, really. But Victoria, exactly. yeah. Victoria do good coffee, man. They're like good, anywhere they're you really go to good. a cafe, yeah. they take they pride in their coffee. Mm. Yeah, so that's yeah. one highlight of going to, to Melbourne yeah. um, that I really enjoy. He called it something else, like magic. I don't know. Maybe mm. he's going to the wrong cafes. Why? Well, why it's is like a special cafe? But I was interested topic. as to why um, coffee is called a cup of joe. I don't know. That's There's a couple Ameri- of different theories thing, out there. Do you reckon that's an Americanism? Yeah, probably. I've I read a couple of theories on it. Um, 
uh, initially, well, there was a guy in 1914, the, the Secretary of the Navy, he banned alcohol um, on naval ships. So the only drink that the sailors could drink was uh, coffee. And that guy's name was um, something like uh, Josephus, Josephus uh, something. Uh, and so it shortened his nickname was Joe. Yeah. So the sailors had a cup of Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Or there is the term, the, the thing, the belief that, you know, the, the average Joe, you know, and oh, yeah. it's, a, it's a drink for the average Joe. The everyday man yeah. drink. The everyday man. Or woman. Yep. It's also mm. a gym in dodgeball that did quite well. They won, I think, average Joes. There you go. Mm. <laughs> but I mean, we're, we're sort of like, you know, modern ancestral man thinking. Mm. Ancestral man didn't drink coffee. It wasn't until quite late oh, in the 1800s. Like well, yeah, tell well. us. Something. Yeah, well, you've got, well, some, you've got some other differing information, Smitty? Well, I mean, not like cavemen from a long time back in the day, but if you look at sort of 3,000 years ago, they were drinking coffee. So yeah. it's yeah. fairly long in our uh, yeah. history of consumption. 3,000 years? Post, yeah. post yep. agricultural yeah. revolution, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah. It's 10,000 years ago. I think they said the, the Ethiopians or something first. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's hear that story, first, right? first I, discovered I, Yeah, that was a classic. Okay. Jonesy and I were just talking about what we'd read about the origins of coffee, and apparently it originated in Ethiopia and then, you know, spread from there into the Middle East predominantly in is it 1800s or something like that. But this Ethiopian goat farmer um, noticed that his goats were uh, quite hyperactive and, and lively after they'd been chewing on these uh, little red uh, berries on, this, on these bushes. Crazy so goat, he, goat energy. Goat energy, yeah. <laughs> I want some of that. So he grabbed some of the berries and took them to a local monastery. And um, they, they threw the berries into a fire. This is, this is the theory that I read. Um, they threw the berries into a fire and they became roasted. Oh. Once the, then they collected those uh, roasted berries out of the fire ashes, whatever, and ground them up and put them in hot water. Um, and there is your first cup of joe. There you go. Yeah. I, I want to know how they got to that point, though. I would have thought that they would just maybe munch a couple of of the coffee cherries and th- off you go, and they go, "Oh, that was maybe that, didn't that was taste so, so good. horrible, like as yeah. a berry." Yeah, it's not really a and maybe yeah. back in those days, you didn't really know if a, a certain berry was going to be mm. poisonous or not. True. So mm. to chuck it in the fire, you want to that then off. eliminated any sort of toxins or anything like that. Mm. Mm. So there, there, in lies maybe your first roasted coffee bean. Isn't it amazing the variety of coffee we've got now coming from that oh, first yeah. casting the casting the uh, the fruit in the fire and the seeds yeah. got roasted and they ate that and now we have got bloody filtered coffee and espresso coffee and instant coffee yeah and you name it there's everything's got got coffee caffeine it's, yeah I mean and we we, we probably talk about coffee as in like a cup of cup of coffee with milk or whatever um, but we you know you've got caffeine products like you know your your energy drinks with caffeine uh, you know mm. Red Bull whatever. Um. Yeah, we could do the we could do a whole podcast on the shitness of those things, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we could just say there's shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not that very ancestral. No, no. That's for sure. No. I mean, I don't know if you guys have had a you know a night on the Red Bulls and the the vodka and Red Bulls uh, at the end of the, the night worst. after a few beers, Horrible. and then you go home to bed and your yeah, heart, heart is pumping out of your chest. Can't fucking sleep because your yeah. heart. Because you've got an uh, upper and a downer. You know, the oh. alcohol is a yeah. depressant and the caffeine's a stimulant, so yeah. your heart doesn't know what to do. I just can't touch that stuff anymore. Nah. Yeah. It, it, it was the worst. Thinking it, about it. The smell of it was horrendous Ooh. too, you know? It's so laden with sugar. It's like syrup. Yeah. It's got yeah. taurine in it though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I did a little bit of research into coffee, just sort of the backgrounds, because I, I kind of, I, su- I use it as a bit of a supplement. Sort of, so I'll do a, I'll do a sort of eighteen, sixteen to eighteen hour fast, and I'm using that. Obviously, it's not no calories. I'm using that in the morning as a bit of a, as a bit of a supp- a supplement, a bit of a stimulant to get me going in the morning. So I usually wait. I kind of like to wait and let my body do its own cortisol release. I don't want to get up immediately, and not to say that I've never done it and not got up and grabbed the coffee straight away, but. That'll be on a day when it's, you know, five in the morning, you want to get going. But I like to, like we talked about in that episode about um, sunlight, because you kind of brought that up, was I like to go out in the sun, get the sun, let the cortisol do its thing, and then have a coffee sort of about an hour, hour and a half after I wake up. So I'm using it as a bit of a stimulant, and then I'll go out and do my morning routine. If you're fasting, do you have it with milk or just coffee, black water? Straight up black, yeah. Yeah, nice. Interesting, uh, 
it's, and I, I kind of looked at a few interesting studies about mortality and it extending the life of people. I know you've got a few um, you've got a few negatives of the coffee, but I found a lot of positives, and maybe I didn't look for the negatives because I love it. Well, so it's the much. great debate, isn't it? Yeah, it is. there's yeah. a there's a definitely a camp that says coffee's bad for you. There's definitely a camp that says coffee's good for you. Yeah, and then you've probably got to also remember that there is a camp that makes billions of dollars a year off coffee because there's like something like two billion cups a day of coffee consumed. So it's a massive industry. Yeah. So maybe some of the data is skewed by big business. But it, what, why don't we go around the table? Is coffee good for you, Rooster? Well, it depends on who you speak to. Yeah. No, just in your yeah. opinion, if you had to say yes or no. Overall, I would say yeah. Yep. Uh, but it is, is it, is, it is a drug. Mm. And drugs have certain chemicals within them that can be harmful so but i just think overall yes that would be my yeah my call i'd I'd tend to agree with you i would say overall yes i think for some people probably no but if you had to broadly say for the broader population i'd say majority yes what do you reckon mick uh well i'm gonna say in context of what i think um the ancestral man's about I, i actually think no so, yeah. so I'll, I'll, I'll be on the opposing side today, and I've got, nice. I've approached this a little bit differently today, guys. I've, I've, um, as someone who has an intolerance to caffeine, Ooh, um, yes, I Sounds dive down that. the rabbit hole of, um, of, of sort of approaching this in my specific field, which is, which is looking at, um, sort of the impacts from a psychological perspective, also considering physiology and things like that. So, um. I, I, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no to this one. Great. That's I good. was, um, yeah, I was of the opinion that it was awesome. You know, mm. I looked at a lot of the positive studies and then I got to, um, cause I'm, I'm really quite interested in looking at my genes and getting those tested and finding out sort of various different snips mm. and whatnot. And the one, the, the thing that sort of maybe swung me the other way to say it wasn't as good as I think it is, was this, CYP1A2 gene. I don't know if you looked into that. This is a the detoxification gene that sort of breaks down uh, the caffeine. So you know, like Mickey was saying there, you know, some people can't have it after about twelve o'clock. Uh, you know, they can't sleep, and yeah. and getting rid of it takes a long time. So this uh, this certain gene is is the detoxification process of the caffeine, which kind of, and various other drugs. Mm. That you, you know, so. Uh, I think I think there was other ones like um, cocaine and all the various other drugs. It also breaks down some food. I think uh, nicotine. Nicotine, yeah, yeah um, pa- Panadol, those kind of things. Yep. So it gets rid of, you know, they call it half life, but sort of the half life of caffeine is usually about five hours. But mm-hmm. people that are sort of lacking in this gene, it can be up to thirty six hours. So for some people, it's really quite potent. And I kind of thought, well, if I'm thinking ancestrally here, if, if you're putting something into your body that is a toxin or is a drug and you have to have this certain gene to get rid of it and it's, it's not ideal because this do- detoxification pathway is there, would we have this detoxification pathway if it was awesome for us? Yeah. Mm. So I, I, I do really understand and, and get what Mickey's saying there about ancestrally. Uh, I think, you know, our, our acceptance of coffee and our um, acceptance of it being a good thing is because of what it does for us. It I gives really, us yeah, a hit. Yeah. I think it's the same as alcohol. You know, everyone's a bit delusional. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. oh, alcohol's so good. We're, I reckon it's but... quite in the same basket as alcohol, but I get, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah we're yeah, addicted, yeah, to, we're we addicted to it. I'm addicted to it. You know? Um, yeah. And it gives us some feelings of, of well-being, uh sort of from drinking it, so some happiness, some calmness, um, emotional well-being f- attached to it. Yeah. So I think that gives it that, that positivity. Yeah. But I think from a physiological point of view, what Mick was getting at, and I, I, I agree, I, I think it's a, a bad thing for our bodies. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Well, it, it's addictive, isn't it? Mm. I know that if I don't have a coffee at the moment within, uh, say, if I go a day, I'll have a headache like a withdrawal headache. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And they do say yep. that, you know, Mickey, you can maybe touch on a bit more about addiction. It's, that's kind of a bit more up your alley. Um, you know, they kind of say to cycle off it, have a few, have a week or two yeah. where you yep. just have decaf or a tea 
and sort of ease your way into not having caffeine because yeah, it is addictive and you get, I get a headache if I don't have one. So yeah. that's not ideal. I, I did think. that a while ago. I went off coffee completely just for, I think it was 10 days. And madman, that first cut back, holy crap. <laughs> Well, that, and that's it the other is thing. Like yes, yeah, blast yeah. off! Like really? it's not like a normal coffee that you have every morning when you wake up. It's like, woo! <laughs> I want the first one back. The after first you. one back. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, I had had an espresso. Like I yeah. had a um, a long mac, and um, man, that thing just about blew my head off. That's probably what a good about way to do it? really yeah, feel it? Utilize. What about the first few days of your um of your uh, uh abstinence from it? I had a, I had a mild headache. Yeah. Yeah, probably for probably for the first day. Yeah. Um it's a very specific sort of headache. I reckon it's different to other headaches you get. Like I I sort of know that as a coffee headache, just the location yeah. in your head yeah, and just yeah, how you feel. Sure. Yeah. Your head just feels a bit um bit sort of heavy, but I I was expecting it and I knew what it was and it, it sort of went away. Yeah. Uh, didn't really bother me too much. I mean, here's us talking about um, the removal of caffeine fr- from our from our diet, but even if you have like too much of it, have you experienced that? Where you have that sort of uh, jitteriness, that mm. anxiety feeling. Like sometimes, I if I have too ma- too too co- strong coffees on an empty stomach, I'll I'll be shaking and I can feel this total anxiety coming over me, and I have to eat something to get something in my stomach to slow down the wow digestion. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's because I've now built up a tolerance, but I don't know if I get that anymore. Initially, I, I do did. a little bit. Yeah, yeah, if I have too much. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So that that that's that's an interesting point, and that's probably. A good point to jump in here, Roo. Um, and, and what I would start by saying is that there's a reason that coffee is one of the most profitable commodities on the planet, okay? And it's because in Western, in the Western world, everyone, or not everyone, that, that's a huge generalisation, but a large portion of the population of the Western world are absolutely addicted to coffee. Yeah. Um, whether those people have a necessity to have one coffee just to help them in the morning or, you know, I, I think we've all worked with people or we know friends or family who, who are consuming, you know, anywhere from one right up to sort of six, seven, eight coffees a day, probably more in some instances. I think the concern for me around what Rue was just bringing up there is is that, that anxiety that anxiety is coming from an artificial stimulation of our adrenal system. And so when, when I really stripped this back, when I considered my own response to coffee and I fall into the, the category that, that Jonesy was just describing of if I, if I consume caffeine after midday, I'm up until 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night, wide awake. Whereas someone like my father, who um, I didn't look into the genealogy of this, um, but his ability to metabolize caffeine is obviously far greater than mine. Uh, he, he's able to have a coffee before bed and, and head off and head straight to sleep. So there's this concern around the artificial stimulation of our adrenal system. And I think from an ancestral perspective, the way that I observe the human body as a mechanism is that we've got everything we need. We don't need to artificially stimulate it. Uh, it, it will operate and it will function to its optimum when it needs to. And, yeah. and, and so I, I don't know that we need to be artificially stimulating it with caffeine. Now, when I looked into this, one of the manuals we use in psychology is the Diagnostic and Statistic Manual of Mental Disorders. I know that's a bit of a mouthful, but bear with me. And caffeine-induced anxiety disorder is actually one of the leading disorders in adults in Western Western nations. Caffeine-induced anxiety, anxiety disorder. Wow. Yeah. Is, okay. Is one of, is actually one of the leading disorders. It's one of four disorders um, uh, to do with caffeine. Uh, and, and when I drill down a little bit further, there is a groundswell of evidence and a groundswell of, uh, of publications and science and research that dives right into uh, caffeinated issues related to insomnia, which, which uh, Rue's just talked about, digestive issues, high blood pressure, rapid heart rate, um, f- adrenal fatigue. And one of the primary ones, which I think is really, really concerning, is this addiction. Mm. And and I sort of I sat in that this week when I was doing my research, and I thought to myself, Have I been addicted? Am I addicted to caffeine? And 
I think for a lot of people, they don't consider their their potential addiction to caffeine similarly to like an addiction to um, drugs or alcohol or anything like that. I think it's a lot more complex because the use of caffeine or, or the consumption of coffee more specifically comes with a whole social component to it as yeah. well. Yeah. So, you know, like we, 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 we've talked about, like alcohol. Um, yeah, like yeah. alcohol or even like, you know, we, we may have had conversations before guys talking about or listen to other people talking about, you know, like the whole smoking, the social smoking thing in workplaces, mm. uh, you know, where people go, oh, I'm just going to go have a smoke. Oh, I'll pop out with you. Coffee's and there's smoking. This, well, I think in a lot of ways it's more damaging than smoking because people have woken up Whoa. to the negative side effects. Nah, oh. man, that's a big call. Nah. <laughs> but I think I that's think hard one to sell. I, 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 I think I, I'm not saying it's as damaging as smoking, but what I'm saying is is that we seem to be a lot more tolerant to the addictive, yeah, yeah, uh, the agree. addictive yeah. nature of coffee consumption, yeah. right? And I think that even, even Jonesy, what you were saying earlier, um, you know, how we jump online or we do our research in the lead up to this, I found lots of articles that were sort of supportive of this. Well, that's called confirmation bias. You know, similarly, when I jumped online, my mindset was, oh, you know, coffee doesn't make me feel great. I tended to lean into articles that propositioned this, this debate in a negative context. And so... I think because people, you know, I think we would have to agree there's far more people consuming coffee than smoking these days. Would you agree? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, no, no doubt so, about it. So, so in that in that regard, how concerning is the addiction? That's the question I'd like to put out there. You know, if 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 we said to people, could you stop right now and not have coffee tomorrow for two months? How many people would go into serious detox, would really struggle, would it impact their family structures, their work relationships, all of these things? And I think that it's, it's a great point to consider, you know, our use of this as a drug. Um, certainly, I agree with what Rue said earlier as well. I do enjoy that coffee in the morning in terms of it does make me feel, it, it makes me feel good. Mm. Um, I, I enjoy the ritual too of making the coffee and like yeah. I grind the beans yep. in the morning. I, yes. I get my little uh, filter. I've got I've got all the little devices. It kind of looks like a I was gonna say meth lab. Let's say science lab <laughs> with all the little bits. It drips through. It's a filtered coffee. I actually yep. I like all the bits. You know I like the the process of the it. The process almost like a meditative sort of process where you just. Yeah, involved it's, it's in what you're doing. Of, it's and, part yeah. of the routine, but yeah. I definitely get what you're saying. I, I mean, I could do it if I had to give up coffee. You know, yeah. I don't. But yeah, to to, the, to Mick's point there. Sorry to cut you off uh, about going two months without coffee. I reckon the majority of people of coffee drinkers who probably are addicted would get over that addiction within within, a, within a week. Yeah, yeah. But if you were a smoker and you were told to mm. go cold turkey for two months that would actually ruin you yeah. so that just sort of is an indication of the for want of a better word the severity of the, the addiction level, yeah. the level of of yeah. addictiveness of that of coffee yeah. uh, well, and here's an interesting one to consider so when i went uh when i've not had uh caffeine i often use uh decaffeinated coffee so i can still have my ritual because i yeah. like cj Ooh, i enjoy yeah, yeah. the uh the process of making mm. the coffee i enjoy the the smell i enjoy the noise i enjoy just the yeah. whole process of doing it so we get uh decaffeinated beans um so you're still getting the antioxidants and polyphenols and stuff like that but you're just not getting the caffeine so you get the caffeine headache you're aware that it's not caffeinated you sort of don't get that that kick from it mm. but you still get to do uh, the process of yeah. it. Yeah. And so, that, that is one of the great benefits that you mentioned there is getting the antioxidants yeah. still even from de decaffeinated coffee. Yeah, well, that's the that's the big thing here. And I think that's why there's so much debate around coffee because I sort of agree with most of the stuff that uh, Mickey Mac said, especially around the, the physiology and the negative points of coffee. But it also has some, some positives. Like, yeah. like if you look at smoking, there's no real positive out of smoking. Like it's not no. like there's, there's nothing that's really good about it yeah. for you. But if you look at mm -hmm. coffee or caffeine, um, it has uh, protective effects for the liver. Uh, mm -hmm. You have sort of increased um, 
concentration. Uh, athletes can use it as a performance enhancing drug. So it's known to sort of give you about a, a 1% increase in performance in the gym if you have 200 milligrams of caffeine before you go in. Uh, and it's got neuroprotective effects. So it's not all uh, bad. Yeah. And then on top of that, you put on the, the polyphenols and the antioxidants and all that sort of stuff. So then I think people have to make a more informed decision of does it agree with me? How does it make me feel? What's my relationship with it? Am I sort of fully addicted or is it something that I can give, you know, leave or, or take um, and weigh all those things up and then decide, you know, is this for me? Am I having a good amount of it? And am I getting what I want out of it? Yeah, definitely. So, so and I guess like, like everything, some, something in moderation. Yeah. You know, mm. If you're having one coffee a day, uh, that's you know not going to be as damaging to you as if you're having two or three a day or four mm. or five, you know. Um, yep. And like you said, mate, I mean, some of the benefits that I, I, I sort of uh, found out upon was that this, it simulates brown fat activity, uh, yeah. caffeine, uh, which I didn't know about. Increases metabolism of fatty acids. Um, increases colon activity. So it yep. can promote Ooh, bowel movement. So <laughs> <laughs> we've all had the experience. So you know, have a coffee oh, and yeah. half an hour later, the old coffee bog uh, shows bog. itself. Yep. <laughs> Quite common common for you, those, aren't they, Rui? <laughs> well, yeah, particularly at weddings, mate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the antioxidant we mentioned about, um, th there's also this study that uh, showed a decreased risk of type 2 diabetes Yeah. Uh, due to the antioxidant or anti-inflammatory. So coffee does yep. have a high anti-inflammatory um, properties as well. Yeah. Uh, but they just found that, um, yeah, there was a, a, a decreased risk of type 2 diabetes. Mm. Um, the ability to, to boost calorie burning, the impact on the content and diversity of gut gut microbiome yes. uh, was a point mm -hmm. as well. Which so the gut microbiome is a big one. Um, so that when you have coffee, you get the plant uh, polyphenols, which are like a plant sort of cellular defense mechanism that they use to, to stop predators getting them. Well, those polyphenols uh, get ingested in coffee. Your microbiome actually feed off those and then they make... Um, sort of protective chemicals which are released into your bloodstream which can be one of the good effects of coffee. Yeah, right. And it'll actually mm -hmm. alter the composition of your microbiome as well whether you're a coffee drinker or you're not. So um, that's an interesting one. It's really it fascinating. Is. Mm. It's, because it's, then you've got this counter argument of um, because it's a, a plant-based um, product, you've got that um, the methylxanthine uh, which is the plant's uh, defense chemical, mm. uh, yes, which some people find or have uh, reactions to. Bad reaction to, yeah, yeah. So, you know, th you've got this trade-off, haven't you? Yeah. Um, I guess yeah. if you found out that you were affected by that methylxanthine, mm. then you would probably avoid coffee. But if you didn't yep. have a reaction to it, then you could, yeah, stick with it. I think maybe it also goes back to what Mickey was saying, and it is a sort of a social thing, and maybe some people sort of get dragged into drinking coffee when it really doesn't agree with them. You know, some people get bad uh, sort of like acid reflux and um, sort of like Ooh. digestive issues from having coffee. Yeah. There's definitely the negative uh, ramifications of sleep, particularly if you're um, caffeine sensitive. So, you know, maybe a lot of people are having it that shouldn't have it and they're just not sort of in tune enough with their body to actually recognize mm, maybe this is sort of doing me more harm than good. Yeah. Maybe, is, I think I that's know. a great point, Maddie, and I think that that, that speaks to – to what we're all about, isn't it? Uh, in terms of our podcast, which is encouraging people to just continue learning and evolving within themselves uh, so that they can make healthy choices and, and maybe, you know, just spend a little bit more time considering the impacts of, of rituals or whatever, whatever things they're doing in their life. I think, I think the other, the other thing I love, and it was one of the only arguments in the positive I came up with was around that ritual that you guys have kept speaking about. Um, and I think that's, that's, that was a hard one for me to walk away from because one of, one of the things that we're really big on as a collective is, is this, you know, getting back to connecting. And I think that the ritual of coffee is creates opportunity for people to sit down and connect, mm, you know, like right. it, yep. it, it, it's, Let's it's go for used a coffee, as a yeah. way. Let's go for a coffee. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. I think, um, you know, I remember a mentor saying to me many years ago, um, we were talking about, we, we, he was, he was challenging me on, um, on the impacts of running on my body and all this sort of thing. And he asked me a question. He said, why the fuck do you keep doing that? And, and I sat there and I thought about it and I said to him, mate, I do it because I love it. And he looked at me and he said, that's the only reason you could give me 
that justifies the impact that it that that what you do actually has on you is mm. if you love something, keep doing it. Yeah. yeah. And, and and so some people, and I've spoken to some people about this, they love love having a coffee. Like they wake up. How Jonesy was describing it earlier was just perfect. You know, like the ritual of preparation and then sitting down and, and he's, you know, he's been involved in, in each component of preparing that coffee in the morning. And some people genuinely love that, you know, it, it creates joy in their day. Um, and so for those people, if they're not as impacted as someone like myself, I, it's hard to, it's hard to say, look, you should stop doing that. Isn't it? Mm. Mm. You can become a bit of a coffee snob too, don't you? After a while, like um, I've got a, I've got a real good mate, and I, this just reminded me what you just said there. Mick. He um he doesn't drink coffee, but he does drink two cans of coke a day. But he will uh, often when we're you know on a surf trip or something like that, he'll get up in the morning early and he'll, he'll go and get all the boys a coffee, and uh, then he will take the piss out of us as we all go, oh. That's a good coffee. <laughs> and that's always the line you say when you have a good cuppa. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Or, oh, this oh, is this shit. Is yeah, 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 this coffee shit. It's cold, it's hot. I yeah. think, I think yeah. you'd need to be a snob. I, I think the some of the health benefits come from having a good bean. Right, you yeah. don't want to have yes. a bean that's like full of pesticide. Exactly. You want to try and get something that's organic. Yep. Yep. Even... Yeah. even even looking at the roasting process, sometimes the beans aren't roasted correctly or they're roasted too much and that roasting can get rid of those health benefits, kills yeah. off the polyphenols, antioxidants and... Great point, mate. I was having a discussion with this and... and yeah, sorry. And a, sorry um, um, a good mate of mine, he owns Rubra Coffees, R-U-B-R-A. And... Um, I, Just down the road. Yeah, uh, and that, that's the only coffee that uh, my wife and I drink. But anyway, I was asking him when I caught up with him last time, I said something about, I asked him about the pesticides on coffee, and he said there actually, what did he say? There, there wasn't a lot of coffee in the world that is um, uh, treated with pesticides. And also oh, the yeah. outer shell, the outer, the outer casing protects the actual bean from the pesticide when it is treated, something like this. Mm. Um, I, I'm just going back f to a conversation about a year yeah. ago. Um, I could be wrong, but he, he he gave me the assurance that there was that the, the impact of pesticides wasn't as dramatic as you would think I, with coffee. Uh, well, it might be different, but I I read a stat that only about three percent of coffee is around the world is actually organic. Right. Mm. I mean, whether you spray it or not, I mm. suppose it's a bit different. Whether that spray is soaked in through the cover or not i mean you know you talk about if you want to get levels of fruit organic you you know avocados and bananas you probably don't worry too much if they're sprayed because you're taking the peel and skin off so yep. m maybe maybe that's the case yeah there are, there are bits of you know evidence about mold and mycotoxins and stuff that get into the the bean if they've been sitting around for too long um yeah, so I guess I guess you've got to probably look for a, a good quality bean. Mm. Your freeze dried Makona might not be the best option, Smithy. You know? No, agree, <laughs> agree. And I am guilty of drinking that at times <laughs> yeah. in my workplace. Yeah, yeah. We it's don't free. have access to good coffee. <laughs> the price is right. It uh, fills a void, which, yes, which probably yes. shows I have a level of addiction. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of that instant coffee, there were there were higher amounts of a product called acrylamide uh, in instant coffee versus your, your your beans and acrylamide is a, um, a a chemical or neurotoxin that is contained in coffee it's in a lot of things yeah. it's in any baked goods like you yeah cook, you yeah. cook your crack your crackers your biscuits your cakes any you know, any type of steak plant you know? food or food cooked at a high temperature yeah yep. will produce that acrylamide product the evidence suggests that it's not a good um a product for humans to consume as it's a potential carcinogen. If, if I reckon if you're tasting that it's burnt, the acrylamide would be high. Mm. Yeah, is, right. Is my uh, uneducated assumption yeah. based on the fact that acrylamide is high in things that are burnt or cooked. So if you look at your steak, if, you, if your steak is overcooked or burnt, that's probably f it has a lot of acrylamide. Got you. So same with roasting the bean. If you roast it too hard, you would get more acrylamide than you would 
yeah. want. Right. I'm 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 assuming. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Unless there's a, an overly large amount in it, but I thought it came from the roasting process. But the roasting process can get rid of molds and things like yeah. that. Maybe the pesticides get burnt off. I'm I think sure. the research I was reading actually just says that coffee naturally possesses that chemical. Mm. I think a lot of plants. Probably do. all plant. Yeah. yeah. Foods to a certain extent. Yeah. 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 But yeah. it's not found in animal. It's not found in ad- animal foods though. Acrylamide. Unless you but burn them. Unless you cook them. Unless it's burnt, yeah. But then maybe that comes from the oil. I don't know. That'd be an interesting one to... Maybe we should talk about that next week. Yeah, maybe oils, we should. Cooking what you cook your stuff in, anyway. Yeah. But um, I think I've heard a lot of people in the wellness sphere talk about uh, like medium roast coffee being the healthiest coffee for you, if you want to look at it purely from a health perspective. Oh, yeah. Obviously, light roast, dark roast, medium roast. You know, dark will give you those sort of more intense flavours, but... I've sort of heard maybe yeah. medium roast is the best for if you just look at it from a health perspective. Well, the flavour right. and the quality is directly related to the roasting process, really. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. Mm. It's, a, it's, a, it's a score of uh, zero to 100. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the, I think the mid-range is about 65. Okay. That's what they say, yeah. My, I like a mid-roast. Kind right. Of, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Here's one uh, interesting one I found out about coffee is it actually contains fibre. Is that right? If you have a... Um, one serving of coffee, so you have an espresso coffee or your latte or whatever, 1.5 grams of soluble fiber. Mm. They actually reckon wow. people with a terrible diet who consume a lot of coffee, you can get up to like 30% of their fiber, and they would be low on fiber anyway. They wouldn't be getting enough yeah. uh, from coffee. Didn't know that. Wow. 1.5 yeah. grams of soluble fiber from coffee. Yeah, that's pretty oh. interesting. Amazing. You wouldn't think so, would you? Because no. you're having an espresso, it's getting extracted, or you're having your filter coffee and it's running through the paper. Mm. But because it's soluble fibre, meaning that it's soluble in water, yeah. the water that's running through the coffee will take out. So you get, you know, if you have three fiber. three coffees a day, you'll yeah, get right. nearly five grams of soluble fibre. All right. <laughs> yeah. That's a positive takeaway. Wherever you go, there you are. <laughs> yeah. As yeah. my grandpa used to say. Mm. Well, I did, I did find a few positives. I, I found a few studies there was one that was actually over a thousand studies a meta analysis in 2005 on the prevention of cancer so they reckon Ooh. it's got flavonoids and legonins in it that stop cellular damage and that reduces the sort of risk of cancer and decreases parkinson's by up to about 60 percent yeah wow yeah um, there was another one in the JAMA inter- Internal Medicine, um, Lotfield et al. In 2018, this one was called The Association of Coffee Drinking with Mortality by Genetic Variation in Caffeine Metabolism. Mm. So that's going back to that gene we were talking about. They looked at whether if you had that gene and you consumed coffee, whether it would be damaging. So they were thinking that because you take so long to metabolize the coffee and get rid of it out of your system, they were saying, well, their hypothesis was that they thought that that would cause health um, damage to people that had that gene and didn't. Those that didn't, what they, f- they found was that there was no correlation and there was a half a million people in this study. Wow. half That's a lot of people, right? Um, mm. There was no correlation between drinking coffee and having that gene and it having negative health benefits for having that gene. But what they did find, what there, there was a strong correlation between increased consumption of coffee and a decreased in heart disease risk. So they were have people were having three to five cups a day and reduced the chance of stroke by about 20% mm. with one cup a day. With one cup? With one cup a day. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I found that quite Ooh. interesting. That was uh, a few studies that I looked at that were positive in the way of increasing your. We want to talk about longevity at one point as a as yeah. a podcast Ooh. topic. Topic. And would, and would that cancer reduction be uh, aligned with the antioxidant levels in there or the anti-inflammatory properties of coffee? Yeah, I think they were talking about the flavonoids and the leganins. Yep. They stop the cellular damage. So mm. obviously, mm. we might talk about vegetable oils being. Mm. Um, in, in the coming weeks, but the oxidative damage that occurs from various things, the coffee is reducing that oxidative and cellular damage. I wonder if getting back to that study you're talking about with uh, that took into account people's genetic susceptibility, 
Do you think coffee is a bit self-limiting? Whereas if you have that caffeine sensitivity gene, and my wife has it, she still loves to have one coffee in the morning, but she won't have another one after that. And mm. she definitely won't have a coffee after about 10 in the morning because it's going to hurt her sleep. Yeah. So I wonder if just by having a bit of common sense, people who are caffeine sensitive don't tend to be big coffee drinkers. You're probably they might right. still consume some because yep. they might want that little benefit that kick in the morning, yeah. But then maybe they just leave it at that. I wonder if that's a yeah. Well, like I said, that there was people having one cup a day in this study, mm. and they found that that reduced their stroke chance of stroke by twenty percent. Crazy. Mm. Yeah, it's it's. Mm, there it's was a lot one. of studies. Yeah, a lot of studies. You get buried it. in the studies, don't yeah, you? Because yeah. it's good and bad. Yeah. And... yeah. Well, um, I, that, I just... that's an interesting point, boys, because I actually found a study uh, which indicated that. A, a day, well, daily consumption of uh, of one one to two coffees was proven to reduce the instance of bowel cancer, and I found another one that actually spoke about MS. Um, mm. There was a reduced instance of um, uh, of MS, and then I continued on with my research, and I found another study that showed that it actually increased the instance of MS. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, One was sponsored both, by the caffeine industry. <laughs> yeah, that, that's right. Uh, it was it was it was interesting. You, you know, you for every uh, I guess that's the one of one of the uh, the great things about science, which uh, has failed us in the last couple of years, and I hope it continues to to go forward. I don't, I'm, although I'm not holding out much hope that you know we we've grown up in an in a in a generation where th that's exactly what science should be doing. You know, it should be questioning every study pro and against, um, and and looking to just bring bring optimum health to people. Um, and so, uh, may that long continue. Yeah, you have a look at both sides, don't you? You look at different aspects of certain research and just make your own decision of what's best for you. Mm. Yep, absolutely right. And mm. how does it make you feel? Yeah, do you feel yeah. better when you drink yeah. coffee, or do you feel worse when you drink coffee? Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, do you reckon? We've sort of established like cavemen obviously weren't coffee drinkers, but we know that they used everything in their environment that they knew was edible, like they would eat, yeah. mm -hmm. you yeah. know, fungus and all sorts of weird things that you wouldn't yeah, exactly. immediately expect to eat. Yeah. I wonder if you're a caveman and you sort of did, I don't know, discover coffee, you threw some berries in a fire and you did happen to eat one or something. I wonder if they would have eating it yeah i reckon they probably would have just chewed it you know that they're going like maybe they're, they're going into battle they or they're know, going yeah. hunting and they want to have that alertness yeah. and that uh sort of little bit of extra yeah maybe ancestral I man know. avoided that that little red or yellow fruit yeah because red is often deemed as a da danger so that turned them right off that actual bush or, or fruit itself and they yeah. never actually even exposed themselves to it yeah maybe because because as i understand it that seed in that fruit you know, the caffeine or the coffee berry is horrible if it's not roasted. Yeah. If it hasn't been roasted, it's, yeah, you're not going anywhere near it. So yeah. maybe they tried it and went, Ugh, this is maybe they just tried a raw one. Yeah. yeah. But maybe they did. Maybe they knew it was horrible, but maybe they used it as a, as a stimulant for a battle or, yeah. you know, there's something's coming up or they, they're on a hunt or they need, they need some quick, mm. whether it was coffee or something else, they would have had something yeah. that gave them a little yeah. bit of a pickup. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Because they, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they would have used everything, like you said, so, some sort of something roots like or, yeah. or yeah, like fungi, like, as you said, Smitty. Well, even the, and even certainly they came they together for their rituals and their connections and things like that. So, you know, they would they were definitely partaking in those things, weren't they? Yep. Yeah, I remember going to Fiji and having uh, kava, which is like yeah. a, um like a root, and it tastes like shit. But it's, um, <laughs> it's a really nice it's a really nice tradition um that you get to enjoy with some you know, traditional Fijians. You sit around a, a a circle and you they they uh, brew it up for you. You pass this wooden thing around and and it does give you a little bit of a um a buzz, uh, mm. probably more a sedative buzz than a pickup buzz that coffee would give you. But anyway, it's just one of those examples of a traditional sort of root being used to alter mm. mind and feeling and emotions. Yeah, mm. yeah. I guess if ancestral man was going to use it, they would probably use it in a lot more of a sensible way than what we perhaps yeah, abuse it yeah. these days. Yeah. As a one-off every now and then. Yeah, exactly, yeah. More yeah. of a ceremonial, ceremonial ritualistic yeah. thing rather than just... Yeah. yeah. I do love a coffee before a workout though. Um, I'll, I'll generally have a 
it's have, a stimulant. For sure. Yeah, I'll have my coffee probably 30 to 45 minutes before my workout. Uh, it gives me a good little pick up. Not saying that I have to have it before I work out because often I work out in the, in the afternoons uh, and I don't have coffee after midday. Uh, but there are definitely benefits to, um, to workout benefits for coffee with mm. coffee drinking. Yeah. Yeah, there was one that I noticed. Um, it said it, re- it could reduce uh, DOMS or delayed onset muscle soreness. Oh, yeah, there was a study yeah, at the yeah. University of Rhode Island uh, where they had coffee drinkers and a placebo group um, and they assessed them after upper body weight training. Um, the coffee drinkers were able to complete more reps in their final sets and reported less uh, soreness the following mm. day, a day or two after. So this is a pr- is this a pre or post pre, workout? Pre pre-workout. workout. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, um, if you look at pretty much every pre workout supplement that you can get, it's got it has caffeine, caffeine in it. In it. Yeah. 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 I wonder whether it, it was coffee they were drinking. Or yeah. Like, it, was, oh, right. it was a cup of coffee. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. 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 Coffee drinker. Yeah. It, it wasn't like a um, it wasn't like a coffee tablet or anything like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Give them decaf as a placebo, I suppose. And yeah. Okay. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's um, quite interesting. The International Society of Sports Nutrition um, have shown caffeine as an effective aid for intense smart, uh, short training, yep. but also for sustained maximal endurance. So there are benefit, physiological benefits yeah. during your training session. Yeah, well, it must be quite beneficial because at one time, even the Olympic Committee uh, banned yeah. caffeine above a certain level because it had obvious, uh, you know, Enhancing properties yeah. for, for athletes. Yep. Uh, I think that's since been relaxed. Uh, yeah, right. Remember yep. that famous sprinter yep. back in the got banned. Yeah, it was. Uh, was it Carl Johnson or ninety <laughs> two? Carl <laughs> Johnson. Johnson. You're getting What's Carl that? Lewis and Carl Ben Johnson Lewis. mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> One of those. Two. <laughs> I don't think that was coffee. I think that was actual um, proper was proper steroids. Yeah. Um, Did, wasn't there some sprinter who? Got was dis- it f- got, got disqualified? Was it Flo yeah. J? Was it, um- no, no, no. Yeah, it was. It was like a yeah. It was there was an athlete that got banned. They said that they sat in a coffee shop and had like thirty coffees, coffees or something. Something yeah, crazy. Something ridiculous, but but um, then didn't I, their time eventually get reinstated or something? Or oh, I'm not I, sure. I, I don't know. Yeah. Let's have a look at that. Um, mm. I don't even know they got there. Um, but I mean, definitely, even from the physiological physical benefits of it, even just approaching us an event or a, a workout. And just having that focus, the alertness, and the um, you know that mental sort of uh, stimulant that mm. it gives you, you know, you can hit your your workout or your um, or your event with some extra gusto. Mm. Yeah, his name was Alex Watch- Watson, guys. Oh, I was close. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not anyone. Watson. Not anyone Watson. That, well, not, I was way not, off. <laughs> Not someone that uh, that I, the name I was familiar with. Uh, just reading here, he remained banned from international competition in the modern pentathlon for two years, from September 1988 through to yeah. May of 1991. The evidence presented to the committee, there was no dispute that Mr. Watson had exceeded the IOC caffeine level, <laughs> safe level. So. <laughs> He's uh he's gone in and he's knocked back a few too long max boys. Yeah, a couple of cups of Joe. Mm. Few too many. That'd make more. you sick more than anything. Oh man. Yeah. yeah. You couldn't you couldn't do it with coffee, could you? No, nah, you're better <laughs> off just popping some caffeine tablets or something. Yeah. You'd be edgy, wouldn't you? His, nick- <laughs> his nickname was the Cappuccino Kid. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, now he's running a Starbucks chain. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good promotion. Uh, have any of you guys come across coffee enemas? Yeah, I've heard about yeah, those. Yeah. They reckon they're really good for I you. I reckon they're yeah. super good. Mm. And I, I can't confirm this, and I don't know if Mickey Mac uh, came across this in his travels, but I've heard a lot of uh, people say in passing that it was even in the Merck manual, which is like a sort of a medical manual that doctors would use to reference uh, up to the 1970s using coffee enemas in the treatment for cancer. Oh. In conjunction with chemotherapy, I don't know if that's wow. true or not. I haven't um, verified it, but I've coffee. heard a lot of anecdotal stuff about it. Yeah, right. Well, I often worry about. I often worry about sharing these anecdotes without checking with wifey first. But uh, I, I, mate, I can actually confirm that um, coffee enemas was something that uh, 
that she and then I utilised when um, when she when she first got sick. Wow. Uh, so probably about three months after her surgery. So just giving her um, her bowel time to to sort of repair. Um, yeah, and she was doing was doing daily coffee enemas as wow. a way of. Um, yeah, stimulating toxins and things out of the body, um, mm. and also, yeah. Um, yeah, accommodating that that sort of regular bowel function and things like that. And 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 yeah, I think the research is pretty extensive. Not that uh, you know, not that big farm is going to get behind this because um, you know there's there's not a lot of money to be made in coffee animus. But um, uh, yeah, I, th- I think there's a lot of really positive more than anecdotal evidence out there uh, to show that there's some really positive impacts of us- utilising that holistic method. Wow. And everything shoved yeah. up your ass gets absorbed faster, doesn't it? Is that right? So it's absorbed yeah. faster yeah, through your yeah. uh, rectal um, cellular lining yeah. than when you consume it? I like where you went well, there. Like, Anything shoved up your ass, <laughs> and then you went very the rectal phrase. lining. Well, I'm just thinking of maybe, <laughs> I'm, uh, maybe just trying to class it up a bit. <laughs> uh, absolute bogan with a uh, quite uh, university professor standard <laughs> language. I was just thinking of maybe a business venture. You know, oh. like you got all these coffee shops around. What if you had like a coffee enema shop? And people just go there and they pay their five dollars fifty for a long max syringe. You go up the back room. Yeah, you know, and uh, sit down with your friends and shove it oh, up your ass. I think it's quite a process. I don't. I don't. Think it's just oh. a syringe that. You well, stick I, up I, there. I look. I, here's what I'll offer. I never ever <laughs> got a buzz from a coffee enema. Oh, okay. Yeah. Never, never got, never got. Um, uh, yeah, any any uh, psychological buzz at all mm. uh, from a coffee yeah, right. enema. Um, mm. so I don't know, I haven't looked into the science of that, of that route to, to offer any explanation as to why, but I, I'm someone who, as I said, who is very impacted by, uh, by caf- caffeine yeah. uh, and, and I never got a buzz out of a coffee. Did it clean you out, mate? Did it make your um, did it clean out the pipes? There's a reason you do it lying down next to the toilet. That's all I'll say. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> You wouldn't want to be running laps at the local park after you've done it. Um, because it, you'd end up in the situation you found yourself in before, Rue. Oh, you, yeah, you, right. You, here we go. you can't make it. But, yeah, uh, yeah, um, yeah look, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, cleans you out. Um, and, and I think, yeah, for, for people, you know, do your own research, as we always say, boys. But I, I think I think there's huge merit to it. Did you, do it. did you do it yourself or you had someone do it be- for you because – there can be a lot of issues uh, putting tubes and whatnot in that position, no. you know. Like it, and like Ruth said, the rectal lining is quite thin, mm. and you can damage yourself if you you're not kind of getting it right. So it's one of those things that is probably really beneficial. But unless you really, like you said, know what you're doing, you, you'd maybe want to have someone do it for you. So it's a bit like a clonic uh, uh, col- 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 Ir- irrigation. irrigation. Yeah. Cl- cl- no. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say. I, look, I wouldn't say it's. I wouldn't say it's as invasive as that. Yeah. Um, I used to get the colonics before my race before my races years ago, um, uh, and and you know I, I would go in and actually have that done at, at a, you know, a proper place. Um, whereas no, I think the co- look again. I think you make a good point, Jonesy. You, you're going to research how to do this you know, effectively before you go and partake in it. But it, it was a lot more straightforward. Uh, you know, I, I think without getting into too much detail, the, 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 what we, what we call the colonic irrigations themselves. Uh, there's a, there's a larger volume of water making its way up through different components of the colon getting into, you know, right up into the back parts of the bowel and all that sort of thing. Whereas the, with the coffee enemas, it's only a certain amount of liquid yeah. um, and you're only flushing once. Whereas, you know, uh, most colonic irrigations go for between 45 and 60 minutes and you're doing a combination of cold flushes and, and hot flushes. And wow. generally, um, your you know, there's, there's instrumentation to measure the amount of pressure in your bowel and all sorts of things very carefully um, observed uh, by practitioners that sort of do it properly. Um, whereas with this, uh, you, you know, 
you've got a, a, bow, a, a bag which you fill up. It does have a, a clip off um, tube that you can sort of cut off, cut the liquid off. Um, so it is very easily done, but you know, you would, you would want to look into how to do it properly. You know, YouTube's a very beneficial thing these days. You mm. can watch sort of how to do most of these things, can't you? Speaking of poo, uh, have you guys tried that? Uh, I think it's in Indonesia. There's a marsupial <laughs> that <laughs> I think it eats the coffee fruit. Yeah. And then it shits out the bean. Yeah. Is it a little monkey or something? Is it a monkey? Yeah. yeah. And then they harvest the bean. Yeah. And then grind it up and it's supposed to be real flavoursome. It's not from, for me. No, I don't know. It's, it's really expensive. Yeah. 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 Is it like a, could be a hundred bucks a cup yeah. or something in yeah, some yeah. parts yeah. of the world? Yeah. Crazy. Really? Yeah. I've yeah. never tried it. Stupid. No. No, I've never tried it. But I mean, what harm could it do really? Is it I mean, Surat Sur- or? Sur- oh, okay. Uh, I don't know. It's got yeah. a name. Yeah. Yeah, I've never Hold tried on. it. So, are you saying you 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 drink it? You're consuming the shit of the monkey? No, you sh- you're consuming the grounded bean that it shat out. So, I think it eats the f- the coffee fruit, and obviously doesn't digest the the bean or the seed. Yeah. And so then that gets shat out, and then the seed or the bean then is then processed as a coffee bean and ground up and made into coffee. Mm. And but the the flavor the flavor having pass through this animal's digestive tract and mixed with its other uh, items in its digestive tract add to its fla- add to the coffee's flavour, the bean's flavour. Coffee mm. luwak. 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 Is that the name of the animal? No, that's the name of the coffee. Ooh. What's the animal? Uh, Little monkey? It? it is a monkey. Yeah. Indonesian monkey. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Because I think... Uh, the fermentation part. Asian palm civet. Probably when the little monkey uh, eats the fruit, that would sort of ferment in there. But I think the fermentation part of just coffee production in general can really change the characteristics of the bean. Yeah, right. So what that means is like the the seed obviously comes in the fruit and then when they first harvest it, if a little bit of the fruit is sort of left on the outside of that seed, that will start to ferment and that can dramatically change apparently the characteristics of the, the coffee. Wow. Um, so I wonder if that's just taking it to the next level, if it's passing through the whole digestive tract of that little monkey. I wonder if that's really just getting some sort of fermentation and it's interacting with the microbiome of the monkey and that's what makes it so... Yeah. Good. I don't know. Yeah. There you go. Their digestive enzymes alter uh, the structure of the proteins in the coffee beans, removing the acidity and producing a much smoother cup of coffee. Oh, yeah. There you go. And it's uh it's um more of a feline than a monkey, the Asian oh, yeah, palm like, yeah. civet C I V E T. Like yeah, a sloth right. like a sloth type of animal or something. Yeah. yeah. Like a cat. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Very. I'd give that a go. Yeah, I wouldn't. I'd, I'd, they're obviously going to remove the crap from it. <laughs> it's a bit nutty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's one of my favourite Austin oh, yeah, Powers yeah, yeah. scenes, eh? When he's got that yeah. brown shit around his, his lips. Coffee tastes like shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's his shit, Austin. <laughs> uh, classic. Uh, yes. Oh. Well, we should maybe finish up on that then. Yeah, I guess on that note, probably yeah. uh, raise more questions and give an answers today. But it's an interesting topic. Well, yeah, we topic couldn't really and, come uh, up with a decisive opinion in the end, could we? There was uh, a lot of positives, a lot of for and against. It was quite a good little debate. Yeah, yeah. do it if it works for you. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You know, life's to be enjoyed. You can't go through life as a robot, not enjoying. No. You know all the little things that make life. You know, probably worse things than a couple of cafe lattes. Yeah. I think so. Well, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Mm, very good. Yeah. Well, hopefully that um, appeased our listener. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, thank him for the email. We got the, the one listener has uh, sent a message in. That was great. Yeah. yeah cool. Yeah. If, it's, it's a start, isn't it? It's a start. If anyone I else would like shouldn't. to send us an email, maybe someone from Belgium, if they yeah. could send us an email. The Belgian dip. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Another Austin Powers reference. What's our uh, email address, CJ? Uh, Modern Ancestral Man at gmail.com. Modern Get in Ancestral touch. Man. Yeah. Modern Ancestral Man, all spelt the same way. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Get in touch. Say hello. Mm. Tell us you like it, don't like it. Mm. Give us some feedback and maybe some podcast topics in the future. Mm. Mm. 
Good yeah. stuff. Let's go and have an almond latte. Yeah, let's go. Have let's an, do it. Yeah. All right. Until next week. Yeah. See you, boys. Good to see you again. See you, Mick. See you, guys. Always a pleasure. Take care. Bye-bye now.